Hi, it's Andrew from C1D Paintball. This is video three and the last of a series of small team battles where myself, Connor, and Zach joined three other Sal Paintball field members for some weekday fun. This type of small number scenarios lets you have a little fun practicing and trying out strategies you normally can't while playing with more random or bigger numbers. For this video, it's actually two games, not just one like the previous two in the series. This because the first game was actually very short and we didn't even go in the lobby between matches. We just transitioned straight to the next game. So these two battles are first four game types, so first floor only, no use of the buildings along the east and west exterior walls. So this is Charles. He's been in a few of our videos and pretty well known in the Montreal paintball community. And he is about to have a really solid round. He's going to take the south path while I take the midfield and our speedballer takes the north path. And I'm just about to mention to Charles that I expect the other team to send a player charging down the south path. As for the previous three games, the enemy has been very cautious. Yet I know Connor and Zach like to occasionally run at the enemy using this specific lane to catch the other team off guard. Charles eliminated an enemy player to the south, who was not charging in, but still was approaching nonetheless. Now with this enemy player in the city hall and me fixed in on him, and Charles on that side of the field, we have a definite leg up. So this screenshot also gives me the opportunity for a teaching moment of the day. I've seen a lot of new or inexperienced players, when they see a tempting target like this where an enemy head goes through a window, to shoot too late or from too far a distance. In this particular case, I did not have the proper time to react and take the shot. Newer players often shoot too late, and not only do you miss the target, because yeah, they shot too late, but it gives their position away, and they lose the element of surprise. Now, I know where this guy is, and I will use that knowledge going forward to help me decide what I'm going to do. One on right, one on right! Now, I get behind cover quickly, as the last enemy player crosses the mid-back wall towards his remaining teammate. I clearly called this out to my teammates, and with that move and knowing the other player is in the city hall, I'm going to move to the other side of the field, practically on top of both of these enemy players. Now in this alley, I have the original player I spotted in the city hall to my right and his teammate somewhere in front of me. Speedball is actually running in from the north flank and is wrapping around to get that enemy player in the open ground. And Charles finishes off the last one who left city hall and left himself open to get taken out easily. Game over! over. Woo! Same thing! Other side! Which side? Come on! Switch side! Switch side! Come on! Time to swap sides for round two of first floor. Speed, speed my garage. Good job, you own that side, man. You own that side. Okay. And I saw you go there and I ran between the two buildings just in case. Good job, Moon Wolf here. Clean it up, clean it up. I'll go in sheriffs here.
and I go into City Hall, which I just called Sheriff to Charles, by the way, but don't worry, you can see where I am. Now, even though this is the second game of First Floor, it's the first time that anyone from our teammates actually entered a building. As you saw the last game, we were aggressive and just used open ground. Now from this position, I can check the south path and mid area. And although it didn't happen in the last game that just ended, and I expected it, I still think an aggressive charge by the enemy could happen, so I'm playing it safer inside. And as you'll see shortly, I'll have my head exposed in the same window I spotted the enemy in the previous game, so an open target for any enemy who's set up in the right place. As most of you know who watch our other videos, I am very chatty, but here in the city hall undercover, I want to be stealthy, and in fact, I hear the other team chatting. I specifically hear someone that seems to be in front of me behind this building, speaking to what sounds like a player in the graveyard. So I feel confident in my choice of position, and have readied myself for what I figure will be an exchange of shot in this area sooner or later. In this freeze frame here, you can see me leaning out so I might be able to catch the enemy doing the same from the southwest corner, one of the busiest parts of the field in most game types. It's a bit tough to hear, but I continue to hear chatter from enemy, and I feel they're not really concentrating on targeting us, and we can get a leg up on them here, so I go to make a move. I'd hope to find a teammate here, so I'd let them know I'd figured out enemy positions. But yeah, one of the disadvantages of being quiet on the field is not being able to coordinate effectively with those on your own side. Now it doesn't show in the video because of distance, but I finally spot an enemy at the southwest corner. We quickly exchange shots, but once again, due to distances, neither of us can make a hit, and I retreat back behind cover. I have already decided that instead of hunkering down at this corner, which is a common move, I'm going to slide into this alley and get a different angle and see what options I might have from there. So this enemy was shooting from the corner behind these drums, and at this point in my head, I remind myself that both Connor and Zach, normally C1D teammates, make up two-thirds of the other team. So they know my style, and normally I would have played safe and stayed back at that corner behind me. So I'm trying to figure out how I can mix things up here and surprise them. Well, I make the decision to quickly check my right flank and then head into this building so I get into the guts of the other side and surprise my regular teammates on a move they've probably never seen me do. And that's the great thing about a small team situation like this, you can try new things. I know that outline of that player with their arms up after being hit, it's Connor. And with me two steps from getting into this building, the timing is great for our team to sweep in and finish the other guys off. Well, those last two steps in the building were two steps too many, as an enemy takes me out from the garage area, and myself and my C1D teammates, Connor and Zach, all head off the field as we've all been eliminated from the game. So that's it for this small team set of videos. Another couple of fun games on this video with a group of great players. Well, we do thank you for watching the video, and would love a subscribe and like. 
Until the next video, make the best of your opportunities like we did on this night. We didn't have a lot of players and we tried something different and had a lot of fun games and good practical practice. Thanks again and remember, it's only a game. Game over.